Hello and welcome. My name is Alexander Marrero with Alpha Star Academy, and today we're going to be discussing the problem roundabout rounding. This problem gives us two types of rounding. The first is regular rounding, which rounds only based on the first digit. So if the first digit is four or smaller, it rounds down. If the first digit is five or larger, it rounds up. Chain rounding is different. Chain rounding rounds from right to left going through all of the digits. So we start in the ones place, we see a five, we round up. We go to the tens place, we see a five, we round up. We go to the hundreds place, we see a five, and we round up to a thousand. So we can see despite starting with the same value, these two different rounding algorithms produced two different results. And the problem we're tasked with is given a number n, determine how many numbers between 2 and n round to different powers of 10 after chain rounding versus regular rounding. Now, the first critical observation you're going to want to make in regards to this problem is that the number of numbers per test case is quite large. In particular, there can be up to 100,000. So this means for each number n, we want to solve the problem extremely quickly in essentially constant time. And in order to solve a problem quickly, there's two sort of reasonable strategies. We can find some math formula that spits out the answer, or we can find some pattern to exploit. And in order to do either of those two things, we're going to need data. So we're going to want to find data by hand and then use that data to come up with our algorithm idea. So between 0 and 100, there are five numbers that round differently under regular rounding versus chain rounding. Those numbers are 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49. Under chain rounding, I will round up to 50. And then 50 will round up to 100. Under regular rounding, all of these numbers will immediately round to 10. What happens if we look at the numbers between 100 and 1,000? Well, now there are going to be 55 examples. The numbers between 445 and 499. You could find these by working it out on paper, or you could write a program to just brute force uh, through all of the numbers between 1 and 100 and 1,000. If we continue on, we're going to see that there are 555 examples between 1,000 and 10,000, namely the numbers between 4,445 and 4,999. And at this point, you should start to see a pattern. Each time we look at the next power of 10, we add a 5 to the number of new examples of these special numbers that round differently. So what we can do is we can loop over each power of 10 and check how many new examples is that power of 10 going to add for our current value of n. And for that, there are three cases. So if n is smaller than 44444, 4, 4, 4, 4, so for example, if n is smaller than 444 and we're currently looking at 1,000, then that means we're going to get zero new numbers from that power of 10. n is too small. It's, it's below the first special number. If n is between 44444 and 49999, then we're going to get n minus 44444 new numbers. So to give a concrete example, if I was, say, looking at the number 483, I would subtract off 444. That's going to give me 39. So I would say that there are 39 additional examples of these special numbers between 100 and 483. If the number is larger than 4999999, then I actually just get all of these examples. So everything from 44445 to 49999 will be an additional example of a number that rounds differently that's less than or equal to n. 
So in that case, I should just add five, 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 five to my count. So the final case here is otherwise, I'm going to add five, 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 five new numbers. So all that we have to do in this program then is loop over all of the potential powers of 10. So that's everything from 100 up to 1 billion. And for each of those powers of 10, we're going to calculate how many new special numbers there are between the previous power of 10 and the current one. So let's dive into our program here. We're going to start by reading in t. This is the number of test cases. This is the number of numbers that we receive in the input. We're going to loop over each of those numbers and read in the current value of n. So again, the goal here is to answer how many numbers between 2 and n round to a different power of 10 when doing chain rounding versus regular rounding. So we're going to start a count at 0, and then we're going to loop over all of those powers of 10. So we're going to start first at 2. two 10 to the second power is 100. And then we're going to go all the way up to 9. 10 to the ninth power is 1 billion. And for each one, we want to check these three cases. However, uh, one of the cases, we don't do anything, right? We add zero new numbers, so we can skip over that one. So for example, if n is bigger than 4,999, then I'm going to add 555 for the 10,000 for, uh, for the sort of 1,000 to 10,000 interval. So this is case one. So to do that, we have to check, is n bigger than 4 followed by 9 i minus 1 9s? So we're just creating a long string and then converting it to an integer and comparing it to n. If that's true, we're just going to add the same amount of 5s. So again, i minus 1 5s to our count. The second case is if n is between 499999 and 444444. If this is true, then we want to add n minus 44444 new numbers to our count. So to do this, we're just going to check if it's not greater than that, but it is greater than 44444, then we're going to add the difference between n and 44444. So in this case, we will add some partial amount. So not the full amount. It's going to be some number between 0 and 555555. Once we're done that, we can simply print out our count. And that completes the problem. And what you'll notice is for each value of n, we don't have to do very much work. In particular, the runtime of this solution is going to be t times log n, so an extremely fast solution. Let's submit our code to the grading server and see if we pass all of the test cases. So we're going to scroll down here, and we'll submit the file. And let's see what happens. And as you can see, all of the test cases are going green. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye, everyone.